All of you know the equation f equals g m1 m2 upon r squared. Pretty straightforward. What I hope to do right now is not just make you see the science in it, but the beauty of it as well. Using just this law and the laws of motion, one can explain almost anything, right from how an apple falls from a tree to the formation of tides and even answer questions like why are planets spherical why does the moon go around the earth and not just fall into the earth why is the solar system almost planar and so on but in truth planet earth and the solar system is where the law of gravity just begins in outer space gravity is an artist of epic proportions painting on a canvas light years wide taking billions of years to create breathtaking masterpieces the formation and motion of these magnificent objects are governed by this very law one would expect a law that explains so many things accurately to be a little more complicated but that is the beauty of it the fact that nature and the universe follows such a simple and elegant law that can be said in a single line Every point mass in the universe attracts every other point mass with a force whose magnitude is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So this law was not born overnight. It all started in the year 1543 when Copernicus proposed that the planets went around the sun. But the belief of the time was that everything the planets the stars and the sun went around the earth as it gained popularity there was a lot of debate on which theory was right but a man named tycho brahe came up with a revolutionary idea to settle this debate he said instead of sitting and thinking about it why not just observe and see what they do now you might think that should have been the obvious first step but people then were different The practice of validating theories with observation was not common. So he spent his lifetime setting up an observatory and recording the positions of the planets and the stars and all this with the naked eye. The telescope wasn't even invented yet. Johannes Kepler, who was one of his contemporaries, went through this enormous amount of data and came up with a few interesting inferences. They are what we call Kepler's laws. Number 1, he settled the debate by observing that each planet moves in an elliptical orbit with the sun at one focus of the ellipse. Number 2, a line from the sun to a planet sweeps equal areas in equal times. Number 3, squares of time periods of revolution of planets are proportional to the lengths of the cubes of their semi-major axis of their orbits. Now I'll explain these laws in detail but for now let's continue with the story. Kepler's laws explained how the planets moved but did not talk about why the planets moved the way they did. In fact, the common theory was that they were pushed around by angels that were flying tangentially to the path of the planets. But Newton in 1680 figured out that there was something wrong with this idea. He was aware of the concept of inertia which was proposed by Galileo that suggested that a body would not change its state of motion unless an external force acted on it he realized that the elliptical motion of the planets around the sun would be possible if instead of a tangential push there was a central pull for example in the case of a stone that is being flung around with a string the tension is always toward the center and not in the direction of velocity Similarly he deduced that the planets were moving this way because the sun was constantly pulling them the most important realization came when he saw the moons of jupiter behave just like the planets that is they were going around jupiter just like the planets went around the sun he also saw the earth's moon went around the earth in a similar fashion he figured this could be true only if the earth attracted the moon and Jupiter attracted its moons just like how the sun 
attracted the planets. And of course, finally, he understood that the reason an apple fell toward the earth was because of this same force of attraction. And thus was born the idea that every point mass attracts every other point mass in the universe.